Hello and welcome to the Fishing Guide Podcast. We are at the Crappie Compound and Joel is here. Are you a captain at the compound? Captain or general? No, or? I just try to do what I'm asked to help. Oh, so you're a soldier. Yeah, maybe. You're a foot soldier. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> you, I need to you, be. We you, all try to pitch in and help, you know. You don't, you, you're not higher up on this echelon. Well, uh, I may be sometimes, sometimes not, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's quite a deal. Um, tell them who you are and, uh, and, and what do you do? You do some, you do some guiding. Yeah, uh, I own uh, Joel Harris Fishing. Uh, that's what I do for a living is carry people out uh, crappie fishing. That's all I do is crappie. Uh-huh. Uh, fish 12 months out of the year oh wow i love what i do uh, we've got great equipment uh, you go out you're gonna be in a new boat you know most of the time pretty new boat right big boat so it's safe and i've got some uh great products we use cornfield fishing gear uh-huh. b&m poles crappie magnet uh, try to make sure everybody catches fish has a great time and do it safely I think we should start with your boat because you mentioned your boat. Now it's actually an ark. Yeah, it's pretty big. Uh, sea Sea Ark. Sea Ark. It, is, <laughs> it absolutely is. Uh, I'm in the new 21 foot flex. That right. uh, there was a team of us to design the boat. Uh huh. And uh, I have the very first one. It wow. is in production. Boat one now. of I one? I have boat one of, of wow. several now. But nice. for a while it was boat one of one. Wow. <laughs> and uh, we're very proud of the boat, uh, the fishability, the quietness of it. The ride is amazing. Right. Uh, probably out of, I've owned a lot of aluminum boats throughout my life and throughout right. guiding. I started guiding in 2006. Uh, worked and guided. I didn't guide full time which I do now, but out of all the boats I've owned, it is my favorite boat. Uh, one of the smoothest riding aluminum boats I've ever owned, one of the quietest aluminum boats I've ever owned, and one with the most storage I've ever owned. Wow. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, the boats was designed by several people. Uh, they included a team of five or six of us that crappie fish right. regular, and they in- integrated a lot of ideas from us. Uh, it's, you can lay 16 foot rods down on either side, flat in the floor or on the wow. ledge built in it. It has air ride seats. It has a cooler built in it that is plumbed that cools the water cool in the live well. Wow. Uh, you can store up to nine foot rods. They advertise it at eight and a half, but nine foot rods in the center. Storage compartments on both, both sides. It has a wash down system built in it. Wow. And just, uh amazing boat well let's let's talk about the difference between uh, fiberglass boats and aluminum boats when you're crappie fishing pros and cons well every, most everybody you talk to will tell you that if you're going to spider rig and push you uh-huh. want a fiberglass boat they're quieter right but i've had two different clients recently and my boat with the design we put in the hull, with the right. insulation and stuff in it, that tells me that sir, it my boat is quieter than their fiberglass boat. Wow! And, and it's always been that way. Your tournament fishermen, uh, you know, they uh, always wanted a big fiberglass boat. Right. And uh, I have actually caught fish out of this boat going into a ten mile an hour wind. Something that's hard to do sometimes when you're pushing. Right, and uh, so I'm. I'm. I can't stress enough how impressed I am with this boat when it was finished. Let's talk about a couple of different techniques that you might use. You 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 pull some stuff, and then uh, and then you also one pull. Well, I one pull, yes, sir, I do. But most of the time, I'm power trolling. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, it in the spring, of course, we're obviously going slower. But right now, we're running, you know, one point seven miles an hour. Cooking. And cooking. And yeah. uh, uh, when you've got a wind coming against you and you're going into it, we, wow. uh, we fished yesterday morning going into a wind and was catching fish in this boat. So I'm pretty impressed. Yeah. And as far as long lining or pulling cranks out of it, you've got so much room in the back of this boat to do anything you want to do. Right. So. Huh. Um, and when you're with customers, is it – when they call up, are they saying, hey, you know, I want to learn how to long line or, uh, hey, I want to learn how to single pull. Is that what happens? I do have that sometimes, yes. I'll have people that will call me up and they'll say, I would like to spider rig or, or, or 
a lot of them have learned that I'm I'm doing a lot of power trolling now, so a lot of them call uh-huh. up there wanting to learn the power yeah. trolling. But I do have people that want live scope trips. I do that also. Right. Not as much. I'd rather be pushing because then I'm spending time with both clients in the front of the boat instead of right. one at a time. Exactly. You know, and, and I don't like anybody being left out, but I do have some that want to go learn the live scope. Uh-huh. Uh, I run uh, 18-foot B&M power trollers this time okay. of year. Earlier in the spring, I'll run PSTs. Okay. Tell them the difference between those two poles because those are, those are two different models completely. Yeah, absolutely. The PST is a lighter weight rod, uh, and we run. I personally run up to two ounce weights on it. Okay. Uh-huh. The PSTs, we run a three ounce weight, and I've tried the three ounce on the PST. It will handle it, but not like it should, in right. my opinion. Uh, so I go to the power trolling rods. Right. And, and that's what they're de- that's what they're for. designed for is to push uh-huh. the three ounce weights. And I run a quarter ounce jig on bottom, eighth ounce above it on a five foot leader. And of right. course Les Smith, the godfather of power trolling, he sort of took me under his wing about three years ago and right. uh just it's been a blessing to me because it's changed. It's given me the ability to do a lot of different things. See, normally in the summer all I would do was brush pile fish, single right. pole. And uh, I think before we had talked about that, and uh, I hadn't done a brush pile trip in a good while. It's wow. been all power trolling because people want to learn to do it. Last time I was in your boat, that's what we did. Right. Yeah. And uh, matter of fact, while we were having dinner tonight, I had two different people texting me, wanting, asking questions about power trolling, wanting to learn to do it. Right. So, you know, it's uh, and this boat, I don't think you could have any better boat power troll out of in my opinion that's my opinion right uh, and it's gotten a lot of attention from other people that's trolling like we do that's okay so- well one of one of the new rods that i really am impressed with and i've been using quite a bit to uh, cast in here lately is the ultimate it's redesigned totally redesigned uh-huh. it's got a, a great handle on it that's uh, uh I'm, ultimate. yeah b&m ultimate. Yeah. and uh, it, uh i've been casting with it now for about six months right and, and i like to cast live scoping right i enjoy that i like to feel that thump uh-huh and uh a lot of times you can't just drop on them you know what i'm saying right but um uh, that's one rod if you like to cast it, it's a little on the light side so it's uh-huh. a lot of fun catching them catch them right and uh i love it so it's you know what is uh wh- what's another one you have a combo the 75th anniversary? Yes, we do. We have for... this, the 75th anniversary compo, which is a great rod. Uh, it's got good backbone. The reel is great. Uh, I enjoy using it. And But one of my favorite combos is the TCB. Right. You know, I mean, I am ai love light tackle. Uh-huh. So, I, I mean, I fished a tournament the other day on Pickwick with Joe Floyd and yeah. I was casting with a TCB, and we had one day we had four fish over two pounds. I was in his boat today; they're still in there. He hasn't taken you know, them out yet. So I mean, I, I have a TCB in my boat, a couple of them, and a couple of ultimates, uh-huh. and I don't go to the lake without them in case I decide I want to cast some. Right. And I'm bad about. I grew up. My grandfather started carrying me fishing on Pickwick when I was four years old, and I grew up fishing on Bear Creek on the creek itself that feeds into Pickwick. Right. Yep. And I, I go down and sit down on the rock sometimes and just sit there and cast. And I've caught thousands of crappie off that creek in my life growing wow. up. And I haven't done it in several years till a couple of years ago. And I said, you know, I'm going to get on the ranger and I'm going down to the creek. And I'm just going to sit down and do what I used to, grew up doing, you know, with him. Because right. he's gone now. He, he was my influence for crappie fishing. And he just taught me so much. He started tying hair jigs like in 1949. And wow. and I always wanted to buy minnows, you know, before right. we went to the creek. And his son, he said, if they can catch them on a minnow, I can catch them on a jig. And he could. He amazed me watching him use a rod and reel and the the feel that he had and some of the things that he taught me. But I got anyway. I got my stuff, TCB in hand, right. threw it in the back of my Ranger, and I rode down the creeks to the where the rocks. You know, they made crossings for the farmers. Right. So it was like. The water come over the rocks. Well, them crappie would stack up in there. Uh-huh. See, early in the spring for the, sp- you know, when spawn. to spawn. Right. And I sit down there and filled a five-gallon bucket up 
casting wow. and just had a absolute blast. It wasn't no hooking to the boat, wasn't no filling up with gas. It wasn't the things that we have to do to get ready to go to the lake, you know. Right. One rod and reel, a few uh, fin span heads and some slab curlies, hit the creek and just had me a blast. So, so we're gonna we're gonna pick your brain because you have a lot of experience and and plenty of guiding experience. What's the one question they always ask you when they call up and and they're like, "Hey, do you have life jackets?" What's the one question that they fishing question that they ask you when they call up about a guy? Besides, trip? how much it cost? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, how much it cost? Well, how much does it cost? But, that is the yeah. first question okay. you're out of their mouth every time. But the what's uh, the second the, question? The second now? question is. Fishing. Do you furnish everything? And oh, okay. I, absolutely. I tell them, I said, yes, I, I have life jackets. Right. I have all the equipment you need. I have the best rods in the business, in my opinion. I have some of the best lures we can use. Right. And I will take care of you. All you need to bring is what you'd like to snack on and some drinks. All right. And yeah. so let's, let's talk about fishing. What are some tips that you can give anglers to catch more fish? So let's start with what happens when a cold front comes through. You're a guide, boom, cold front, bluebirds, guys. How are you going to catch fish with clients? Well, most of the time in that situation, the fish are going to be home. finicky. Well, <laughs> yeah. if you can, you know, I hate an east wind, but you right. can catch fish with an east wind. Okay. But you can catch them behind the cold front. One of the things I found out is to downsize. Okay. Number one, I downsize when they get finicky. Right. And, and, and you know, most of the time a cold front, if you're fishing brush piles, they're going to not be out on the outer edges or up high in the brush. They're going to be stuck down in it. Okay. And I downsize, and when I do that, I use trout magnets. All right. I love them. I believe in them. I use okay. 164th ounce heads, a trout magnet on it. I'll tip it with a uh, slab bite, and I use a number five split shot above it, and I use two or four pound line. Wow. You know, and, um, caught thousands of fish doing that you know all right um just that is and also in clear water i use the same setup okay so all right let's let's uh talk about a lure color so you're going out there let's just say it's a an average day how do you know what color lure to use i'm based on there there's several different opinions in the fishing world I base mine a lot on what the fish feed on in the lake. Okay. Okay. And the right. time of the year. Just like when we have a mayfly hatch, I'm using a gold color or right. something like that, a dark color. Uh, in dingy water, I'm using something bright like orange and chartreuse or chartreuse. Okay. And I just, I guess a lot of it comes from knowledge. I don't even think about it anymore a lot of times. Right. I just know where I'm headed fishing, what the color of the water usually is, and I get prepared. And and one of my absolute favorite colors in clear water year round is the gold trout magnet. Yeah. With the gold trout magnet head. Wow. Love gold, it. Huh? And there's some people laugh. They're like, you use that? And I come out with three or four of them, you know, when we're on a guide right. trip and all the rods have got the same color tied on it. <laughs> right. And, you know, the next guy may be fishing the same like I am and using a different color, but I tell everybody – if you believe in something and it works for you, use it. Okay. Yeah, that's just me, you know. Right. Um, let's got, go. With, let's go with a tip. What would be a tip that you would tell the average angler to catch more fish? What should they do? Study your lake. Okay. Know what the fish do, and follow the fish. I tell everybody that. They say, "How do you okay. catch them year round?" Well, in the spring, they're up in the shallows. All right. They move out. Follow those fish. If you can fish enough to keep up with them, like I'm going to give you an instance on Pickwick. Okay. On Pickwick, early in the year, they'll be back in the shallows from what we call the railroad trussle, really okay. shallow water, three, yep. four foot. As they move out, when the spawn's over, we follow them down the lake. Like right now, I can tell you where those fish are at on Pickwick. Right. And they have moved about two miles. I mean, you'll still catch a few fish up in that shallow water, but it's very few. Okay. And in between, but right now they're out close to the creek run in 20, 25 foot of water around Aurora Springs from there, plumb out to the river. I see. And, and that's, I tell people, you got to follow the fish to catch them. Okay. And, and good, after good years tip. of fishing, you sort of got in your mind where those fish are going to be at this time of year. Right. But that's not always the truth. Yeah. This week down here, a lot of the fish have moved up shallow. 
and they should be right. on out deeper. But we've had some weather. We've had a thunderstorm come through, a little front. Uh-huh. Water's cooled off up in the back end some, okay, from fresh water coming in. Right. It's danger, so they've moved back in there out of the clear water, which is a higher temperature. Yep. Like a five or six degrees difference. Wow. This yep. week. that We've seen that happen this week right here on Sardis Lake. Wow. That's a great tip. Yeah. So you make sure you do that. That takes us to uh, Tackle Time. Tackle Time sponsored by Pico Lures. Pico Lures has a complete line of hard and soft baits for everything, not just for crappie, but bass, walleye, stripers, whites, you name it, any kind of game fish, they're going to bite a Pico. So you can check them out at picolures.com. Joel, if they want to check out your guide service, if they want to call you up, ask you how much a trip costs, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, how many people can be in your boat right. and stuff like that, uh, where are they going to go? Give us some information. Uh, they, I, they can follow me on Facebook at Joel Harris Fishing. I'm on Instagram. Okay. I also have a personal page, Joel Harris, on that. Uh, we're working on a new website. We had one up. We've taken it down, but we're going to get it. It's be back up before long. Okay. Or they can call me, 662-424-2551. There you go. There you have it. Like I always like to end the show, make sure you keep your hook sharp and your lures in the water.